everyone. Welcome to the Next in Time podcast. I'm your host, ST, and today our guest is Raven Josiah. He is the co-founder of Waywo, which is to aid business owners, creators, and project pursuers in complementing their goals by implementing productive collaboration techniques. Its goal is to replicate the successful model in inner cities throughout the United States, partnering with local influencers and the local government in each market. Currently right now, they're based in Kansas City and they're they're already making a huge impact in this area. So, uh, Raven, welcome to the show. Thank you, man. Appreciate you having me on. So, I was going to say that uh, before we started this uh, conversation that uh, you were telling me about like how Kansas City has changed in a way with how the uh, business scene has changed with the new airport and with all that stuff. Do you yeah, want to learn more about it? Yeah, of course. Um, something that we've seen and something that's very interesting for myself is um, I'm originally from New Jersey, grew up in New Jersey, Union City, um, and my business partner is actually originally from Florida. And so about I came here about seven years ago for school, and then I came and it was really just more so I love to travel. So I'm like, okay, I need to come to Kansas City, um, get my degrees, and you know, kind of like move on. What's the next scenario for me? And so about five years ago or four years ago really when I graduated it was very interesting because I was ready to go to LA because you know I was in tech scene it's LA you have all your reasons to go to LA and so my business partner at the time or now he wasn't even my business partner just yet we had ideas we conceptualized he was like how are you gonna go to LA if we haven't even taken over Kansas City yet and I was like, wow, that was just very interesting for me because like in terms of low barrier entry, it was just amazing. So what well, it kept me here. And so the, what we're finding is what we're trying to do is keep the talent here because there is an immense amount of talent um, for a lot of different reasons. Um, we just got a new um, international MKCI airport. Uh, right. So that's. That has been huge for us. Uh, we have what we got the bid for FIFA World Cup in 2026. Um, we got, you know, it, from sports to different industries that really care about, um, you know, the talent in younger middle, uh, um, younger schools and things like that. Uh, there's just so many different things happening in Kansas City that it's just uh, an amazing time to be here. And whether like it's the new renaissance of Kansas City. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, I'm, a ha I'm so happy to be a part of it. Um, but we do see this in different pockets of land, right? Like I always talk about the startup film. And so this is not only happening in Kansas City per se, um, you know, that that's always been here. But something that I see while I'm here is just like all these people, all these businesses that are starting here are really are really trying to stay here, retain the talent um, and then just, you know, keep it in that sense so that, you know, Kansas City continues to build, uh, whether it's work, whether it is socially, whether it is government based, whether it is um, in the entrepreneur realm. It's really, really growing. And so what is the significance of this new uh, renaissance of Kansas City? Like what's the re what was like what was it like back then compared to now? Yeah, I mean, so I, w I haven't even been around this long, so this is definitely all secondhand information for myself. Um, but what it feels like is really, um, really just so I, I think I always like to love I love the aspect of the low barrier entry. Right. If I have to say what is the main difference in terms of Kansas City is the fact that like a week ago, I was able to speak like one on one with the person who is spearing who's who's, ba who's basically ha having the World Cup here. Right. And so like in terms of low barrier entry, like I can put myself in the room with people that are like with major business, like major businesses or major um, owners or people like an executive position. Uh, and really to just dial in and get advice and actually very, very like conscientious about what's happening to maybe startups, right? I'm able to be like, okay, can you, someone has just had an idea to have a startup and I'm able to put myself in a position where I can reach out to a CEO of a company and they are just going to be like delighted or they're going to be willing to just give out advance and free game. And so in terms of like the renaissance that I see, I think the low barrier entry is very much critical point in Kansas City where, you know, you just have access to anything and everyone and everyone just really genuinely wants to help each other, which is something that we don't really see in the other metros. I mean, particularly Jersey, right? <laughs> Everyone's more like, okay, get the hell out of my way. I don't give a crap. Exactly. exactly. And so it's very interesting that like, I always used to think like people say they call it Kansas City nice. Um, I always used to think like, it's just a matter of, you know, like when I think about it, when people talk about Jersey or people talk about like New York, you know, you're thinking about like what's happening in the metro, right? You're walking through Times Square and like everyone's just so rude, rude or like just disconnected. Um, But here it's just very much different. Not only just walking down the street 
street and just neighbors saying hi, but more so even in business, even in business, you can just reach out to anyone. And I feel like that's shifting for a lot of people in like in every major metro, but it's very, very prevalent in Kansas City. And it has always been very, very prevalent in Kansas City. Got it. And so um, in a way that what you're doing right now is that you're trying to be like the main incubator for some of these uh, new businesses that come out. So what are the types of businesses that you see that are popping out out of, out of, out of the blue? Oof, there's so many. I mean, people are being extremely creative these days. Um, like, it's just, it's amazing. So like, the, I mean, we started where we saw a lot of local artists, um, you know, many, many different types of local artists are here. Um, a lot of people, which is, which is great. A lot of like local artists, local designers, um, a lot of people in the tech world, we see a lot of people booming in the web three space here. Um, and then it really, for us, um, whether it's tech, I mean, we're talking to somebody who is an A or like a huge into AI and neuroscience. I'm trying to make the connection between AI and um, your mental health and trying to make that connection. Um, so like, I mean, it's just extremely creative in terms of the type of businesses that are booming here. For us, in terms of incubation, I think we're just trying to create a hub to understand exactly, like to talk to someone, understand their needs and to be able to have a um, have a big enough, like a diverse and big enough email list per se. Uh, to be able to connect them with to help them move further and whatever endeavors they have going on. And so how's that work been so far since you've moved into Kansas City? I mean, it's been amazing, honestly. I, we, in terms of Waywell, we st stands for what are you working on? Really what it started as was this idea of really just, uh, we've been called a connective tissue. Uh, we've been called just really just like a playground for entrepreneurs, a playground for business owners. For us, it's really important that, you know, people feel like they have a community backed by them a genuine community that truly really does care about them. And so we really just changed the structure. We like to talk, we like to say like, and you can get this from anywhere, any, like you can get this from any place, anywhere. You know, we always say people go to networking events for about an hour, an hour and a half. And you know, all you really get is maybe two contacts and then something set up on Zoom or a call for like, you know, two weeks out. And um, that's about it, right? And so for us, we wanted to create a scenario and a structure where we can tackle that, what you, you and what traditionally is an hour, an hour and a half networking scenario and what we wanted to do is condense that into 15 minutes but then put these people in a scenario where they're surrounded in a table in a round table scenario where people are actually like not only are people learning about each other but i get to I, like i meet you and i get to see how would you navigate an issue at the table right if i'm sitting at this table uh with diverse entrepreneurs and diverse business owners and i have this pain point how would you from your experience from your past titles or whatever job description your expertise how would you use your background to help me in my pain point and what we find is that's just a better way of communicating and understanding what someone else has to offer or their knowledge or just their expertise in general so instead of just saying i'm st i'm in data science i could actually be like okay my pain point right now is maybe um i can't you know create an api to connect chat gpt to my app Right. And then you get to walk me through that problem. Then it's like, OK, like the next time we have a conversation, it's already set up. And so why is it that uh, what you're building right now with Weibo is uh, unlike other networking tools? Because, you know, I've been, like I said, I've had I live in Columbus. And yeah. I've, I've, I've been to one networking event where I felt like I've met a good amount of people, but I only had like two conversations, as you mentioned, two conversations after. And none of them felt like they are fully in uh none of them felt like they were a good fit for me as a war as a long-term partner so exactly. what like is that is there like a reason behind why this why behind this phenomenon is why it's causing all this or do you know yeah i mean i mean i, I, I actually i should look into the research for that because my background is is in like experimental psychology so having a question and be able to have data to back it up so um i won't say that i know a particular like reasoning for that phenomenon but i just anecdotally i just know like from people i've talked to that you usually is the case right because the, the thing is at these mixers at these networking events it's like and almost in a sense just shallow either you're looking for something specific or you don't really even know what you're looking for right and so now imagine differently like and that's exactly that's the pain point we're trying to fix right you have these events and you're not just having a shallow like you might as well just send everybody at that networking event your resume 
You have like 10 seconds to tell them exactly who you are, what you do. And then just based on those 10 seconds or those two minutes, they get, they, they will, act, they will just from two minute conversation with you, they're expected to be like, okay, this person's a good fit. But if you add a scenario where, you know, we're all around the table and everybody has a voice to be heard and we get to actually dial in on every single problem, every single person at that table's problem. And then I get to utilize my expertise. Then, you know, in a sense, then you'll have a way better understanding of that person's capabilities. And so then it's going to be a lot more like, oh, you know, and so we really structure it. So it's like, OK, like, you know, this is just I mean, we have moderators at these tables, but we structure it where, oh, I know a perfect person for this or they know a perfect person for this, you know. And so for us, it's like we want to identify pain points. We want people to all everyone at the table to have a voice to be able to actually leverage their skill set. Yeah, because one issue that I f find with these is that, okay, you know, you try everyone, you try to work on cr facilitating that uh, connection, that, uh, that uh, relationship. But let's say if uh, they're not, they're not, they're not in sync for some reason. Like, do you, do you, do you basically pr like what do you call it? Prematurely find any synchronization between the, between two people when you're trying to put them, like trying to connect them together. Yeah, of course. Uh, so that's something that we actually do heavily as well. Well, so for us, it's a, um, and so we have a funnel, but Way Well Wednesdays particularly, um, it's interesting because, you know, what we like to do is identify pain, right? And so identify a pain point can be either a, a challenge that you're facing in your business. It might be you're looking for somebody in particular. So we always like to say, okay, what would be an ideal connection for you? And so for us, we take it as our job to maybe there's no one at that table this week that can help you with your problem. But now I know exactly the type of person that you need, right? And so between us, us, our business partners and uh, people we collaborated with um, we're probably three maybe like one two connections away from that person that you need and so then we would make it a, then we would actually make it our um, job to reach out to a person bring them there the very next week and then have them right so like for example SD if you told me like this is my this is I'm having an issue with this boom 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 I'll be like okay perfect right leading up to that next week I'm going to be looking for or have my ear out at the very least for a person that can help with that particularly and that way when you come to way well wednesday you know i already have someone there that could help you with your issue all right and so let's move forward and i needed yeah. to ask you on why did you decide to start way well yeah um so for me personally um jonathan my jonathan lopez my business partner has, has a different answer probably but for me personally, is like I've always growing up, I've always had so many different interests, right? As we all do. Um, and so for me, it was really, it was really great to to figure out something. Like I built a system. Well, we built a system where I'm able to have like work on a little bit of everything, right? Have a hand in a little bit of everything. Um, whether it's you know today I'm working on you know talking to the possibility of creating a Kansas City DAO, right? So like some work in the Web three space, or I could be working on. Um, you know how do we how do we help local artists become more known um in a you know on a, on a national scale right or we can be helping on a you know throwing a tedx back at our alma mater right and so for me like that diversity aspect i am force i'm forcing my, myself and i and that has a negative connotation but i want this so i'm forcing myself to meet all these diverse industries creative people from all these industries and so like to have all of these different um entrepreneurs that and business owners align um that's why i decided to start way well and so what was the what well, what was the journey like for you to start it uh it was a tough one i mean i mean it was interesting because the way it came about really was because i was finishing my master's thesis and then and, um i me and jonathan he was in the process of uh, stream like he was in the process of managing his uh, marketing company that he had started at college and so you know we didn't work at the, we didn't work on the same exact thing at all but um so like we just worked in entirely different field i was in data analytics he was in publishing and marketing and so but oh the always you got the creative and the analytical working together <laughs> yeah exactly so it worked out so exactly so every single tuesday we go to this coffee shop in the downtown Kansas city area every tuesday and we wouldn't even work like we we would help each other out but we found that there was like a this idea of um you know we wanted to create those scenarios to be a lot more structured and so we started keeping each other accountable every single week not just we just go work but we keep each other accountable right and so like we did that for a very long time every single tuesday nine o'clock and it really helped us out so then our mindset was okay that what if we added more people in the room diverse people in the room 
What if we added a videographer? What if we added a real estate person? What if we added... Um, so I'm just trying to have different kinds of people come together and say, okay, let's let's build this whole network connection and just now let's spread this, like what I call organization beyond, the, beyond what you're building right now. Yeah, exactly. And so it started with that. And we did that once. This wasn't even a business yet. We did it one time. And so we utilized the structure that we use for two years. And so when we did that, like, it was just extremely helpful for everybody involved. And we called it a work party. And we it was just extremely helpful for everyone that was involved utilizing that structure. And to the point where, you know, they were asking us, we should do this again. Let's do this again. And so we started thinking like, okay, like we need to try and scale this. Like more people should have access to it. Like everybody wanted to bring two, three friends. And so we're like, okay. And so that's kind of like how it started, you know? And the reason why the name Waywo is Waywo in terms of what are you working on is because for those two years, when we met in the coffee shop, part of the structure was every single morning we would ask each other, what are you working on? What are you working on? And so it was just interesting that like, then we ended up coming to it um, and it, it just worked out really great for us. And so what challenges do you see in terms of fostering this vision of Weibo? Yeah, um, for, for us, it's more so, well, I mean, there's particular challenges right now, um, but it's not even more so. I mean, I would say challenges for us. It's, um, let me think about that. I mean, for us, it's interesting because it's a challenge, but then it's also great, right? Like I mentioned earlier before we started recording in the sense that like, you know, people are always busy we're working we're asking business owners and entrepreneurs um people that you know we're asking them to come to our events right um but the the idea the thing about the our events in themselves it's interesting because it helps us even right and so for us i believe it's really um getting the message getting the message, uh, showcasing clearly what it is that we do for people to understand that it's beneficial for what they do. Um, because at the end of the day, when you come to our event, you are truly just working on your business a lot more. You know what I mean? Like you're coming here to work on your business. Because a lot of people work in their business, but you, when you come to our event, you get to actually work on your business and leverage different things. So what does it mean? So like, what does it mean by working in your business versus working on your business? Yeah, for example, um, you know, and even like, okay, so let's say there's like a re retail designer um you know they just dropped the merchandise um and they're doing like the day-to-day -day, um they're doing the day-to-day -day in terms of like retail like they're behind the register or they're doing the design for new clothes or they're worrying about the next drop like that's their day-to-day -day operations right but you know maybe they're thinking about like collaborations and the different things like so for me i think it's more so when i say working on your business i think it's really taking a step back and then gathering different perspectives on how your business is perceived and then, you know, you can choose to utilize that advice, but more so just getting external eyes on what it is that you are working on. I think that for us, what we mean when we say that. Yeah, because it makes know, sense. Uh, I think most like I feel like the audience will make their own judgment on this. <laughs> Yeah. But in in a way, because you're building this platform, trying to facilitate networking and facilitate collaboration, facilitate this uh, vision of re building all like building a what you call a business community in Kansas City. So yeah. what like do you feel like this business? You know, there's just so many organizations out there in Kansas City. You got the Chamber of Commerce. You got meetup events. You got a bunch of different networking groups that does that does all this. Like, what are you doing differently that from for Weibo that you know makes themselves stand out from all of these. Yeah, I think I think it's for us. I think it's you, the structure that we utilize, right? I think we really like where we think. I think it's it's truly is important to one like purposely like we're very intentional about what happens that way. Well, um, like just the structure in itself, right? Like identifying a pain point, right, and just having everybody sit at a table uh, from different industries that actually say, "This is my problem." Mm, who who has insight on my? So problem? I, I think I saw one of your one of your videos where. I swear everyone is gathered in a circle and yeah. it, it's not like you know a, ne a typical networking event is all about like people standing next to each other just talking and talking well like different groups of exactly. people but I think what I saw in one of your videos was that people were just sitting together like in a in a circle and then they just like hey what's your problem what is my problem how, how do I how do I resolve is that like what you're trying to do yeah, I exactly. Like and different. Yeah. And even, yeah. And, and especially in that case, right? So we have, we call it war rooms, right? We're sitting in a scenario. So 15 minutes of networking, like your traditional networking. But at these war rooms, we will, again, the, 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 the table will be very diversified in terms of industry expertise. We have high schoolers. We have people that are 65 years old. Like 
a little bit of everything. And so, you know, if we have a scenario where it's like, okay, we call it first round and everybody, you know, introduces themselves. What are their, what are their strengths? Um, what is a pain point that they're facing in their business? And so every single person does that. And then, you know, second round is basically the, the floor is open and the, so there's moderators in every table, but the floor is open. Does anybody have insight on Raven's pain point? Right. And then there's a discussion, right? And so like the moderate, it's the moderator's job to be able to facilitate this conversation. Right. And so like, now let's just say, um, there is nobody understands my pain point, but one person at the table does understand my pain point. The moderator is trained to be like, okay, I think Raven and ST, since you got, since ST can help you with your issue the most, you guys will move to the one V one consultation area. And then you guys so, break off is it, the table. Sir, no, sorry, I got, I got something stuck in my throat, but is it more about just like, okay, you start in a general conference room and then go into a one-on-one -on -one breakout room or something. It's like in a, this is more like, is this in a actual building or what is it like? Yeah. So for us, we partnered with Keystone Innovation District. Um, they Their mission certainly aligns with our own, um, where they're just trying to foster uh, collabor like collaboration and innovation throughout Kansas City as well. Um, so definitely shout out to them, Kevin McGinnis and Craig Moore. Um, they have done a lot for us in that instance. But so this does happen at the Keystone Innovation District uh, building. And so what it looks like is you walk in, you have like, you're in a, you know, the lobby area if you will and you will have like a little bit of networking and we'll just have some interactive check-ins and things like that very much activation um just like any other and then we you know we move into a, a scenario where we have a keynote speaker we call it our fire starter um and then we we break off into these war rooms um usually we have a general war room which is where it's just in the i the aspect of identifying pain points and leveraging the people at the table um skills and expertise and then the other war room is going to be specific to whoever the keynote speaker skills were, right? So for example, on April 19th, we're going to be having a Web3 panel with some really great um, um, Web3 enthusiasts and people that are actually doing the thing around the country. And even someone might come out from London um, just to be able to speak. And so we'll have a table specific. So it's going to be like called a Firestarter War Room. And that is going to be that other table, the specialized table for that day will be all about conceptualizing Web3 integration into your business whereas the other table is just um general war room you have a pain point utilize the skill sets around you to help you out and so where do you see this going in the coming years yeah um for us i believe it's all of, like if i can say anything in terms of what makes us different it would be two things one the structure the intentionality behind the structure um i think you know really fostering and um, curating those conversations and collaborations is something that's different between us um and then not only that but then also just the fact that and this always sounds horrible but like the fact that we're doing the thing right we're giving people an opportunity, um, a tool in your toolbox, if you will, right? You're gonna have many, many different types of tools um, all to fix things, right? So like we have, you know, Tamer of Commerce, that's an amazing tool to be utilized. We wouldn't say not to use it. Um, you have all these different things and we're just another tool in the toolbox for um, business development success, right? And so for us, um, we want to really white label that tool in terms of the structure that we utilize. Uh, we wanna be able to package what we do and showcase and send it off to organizations, corporations, different businesses, universities. Um, we have already been able to reach the high school level where we went and we showcased our structure with high school students um, that were in a um, accelerated program. Um, North, it's called Northland Caps. They're an accelerated program, trying to figure out exactly what it is that they want to do. And we utilized our structure there. We are actually going back to our alma mater as well at Abilene University um, with the student support services. And we're going to utilize our structure there. Um, so for us, I think we want to really just package our structure and teach others to be able to utilize it. So this is like a nationwide thing. Uh, yeah, definitely the goal. I mean, and it helps when your business partners, when everything started out, are around this HQ that you started at. But we've always had a lot of people fly out, um, already spreading the name and spreading the structure, um, if you will, wherever they are be. So we mean we've had people come in from California, uh, Jersey, Florida, Texas. And so, you know, we want to make their experiences uh, as great as possible and um, really, really create strong co um, connections with these people so that for when they go back, um, they're one, spreading the good name in terms of like, you know, already building a roster wherever they live so that when we actually go there, it's as simple as getting a meetup together and utilizing the structure um, wherever we are. All right. And 
one final question I wanted to ask before we jump off, because we're running out of time. Um, what would be your one major success story that made that came out of this whole uh, out of this whole system that you built? Yeah, um, I think for us, and this goes to show exactly. Yeah, I think for us, we have a few. We have a few, um, definitely. But one that always sticks out to me really is um, we always have to remember who we're doing this for. Um, a big reason why we, you know, put people in the room together, um, whether they are very established versus if they're just starting off, is more so for people to, one, truly understand what it takes to be in that other person's position, right? And so that's always been a really, really underlining goal for us when we first started this. And so with that in mind, one of the first people that attended our work party back in July, uh, she told us that he wanted to be a photographer, wanted to be a videographer. Um, we're like, okay, so, you know, we connected him with a commercial photographer for GMC, uh, Garmin, um, just really good names in Kansas City area. And we sent them to go meet. Not only that, but at our one of our first events, we told him, okay, um, record and take pictures and do all these things. And so, you know, he ended up coming back two weeks later and he was like, you know, because we are very much, and then he had a conversation with that person that I told you about. And then he came back two weeks later and he said, this isn't what I want to do. I thought this is what I wanted to do but this isn't what I wanted to do, right? And so for us, and so he just stopped doing it. And now he's in 3D printing, right? So for us, it's very important that we connect people um, in a way that's transparent as to understanding what it is that the other person is doing to one, understand if they can help you. But two, if you are that aspiring entrepreneur, understanding exactly what it takes to do what it is that you want to do, right? So for us, it's really just a matter of transparency and leveraging each other's skill set and truly diversifying the room room and building a community to be able to help each other out. All right, cool, Raven. Thank you so much for coming on the Next in Time podcast. And um, we're looking forward to seeing how Wavo will look in the coming years. Appreciate it. Thank you, Esty.